Hi, my name is Michael Pucciarelli. Tonight, I'll be talking about my still life photography. I first would like to give history of who I am. I started professional photography around 2010. I got a social degree in 2013. I joined PPA in 2015, and then the Maryland Associate in 2017. And in 2020, I joined the, Philad the Pennsylvania Affiliate Club. My favorite type, of course, is still a photography, but I also like architecture, landscape, and nature photography. These are some light painting sample images. Some of these I have entered in competition, and some of these I'm going to enter in competition. These are some white plexiglass sample images. I like to do food on white plexiglass or a white background. The last two images I did enter in the quarter competition of Maryland. These are some black plexiglass sample images. And I venture a lip sip one in the Maryland quarter. I'm gonna enter the first two in the Southeast District. Tonight's agenda, we'll talk about the white plexiglass table, the black plexiglass table, the regular still life table. And within these tables, we'll talk about the lighting modifiers and other accessories that could help you take a great still life photograph. And then I'll talk about the camera settings. And then I have a small demo with the Debbie Photoshop and the Lightroom Adobe Camera Raw demo. It's called the white plexiglass table. And I bought this from Amazon. It's five years old. I've had it for five years, still the same table. There's a big price difference between the BH photo plexiglass tables and the Amazon ones because of the Manfrotto frame. And the Manfrotto frame is the most expensive part. And in this photograph, it's not the Manfrotto frame. And I still use the table today. There are many lighting modifiers you can use with the white plexiglass table. For dramatic light, you could use mirrors, silver and gold cards, silver reflectors. The difference between a silver card and a gold card is a gold card will have a yellowish tint. And then white reflectors and white cards are great for soft light. And then black cards are great for taking out glares. They could help control the flash of a strobe when there's too much light. Then there's plastic fusion scrims. They soften the light. You just simply put the plastic fusion scrim in front of the strobe. Colorful gels work great with flash. You just attach the colorful gels to the strobe or flash it. And then there's medium size plexiglass sheets and these are great also for softening the light. Then a cinephil, and this is great for creating a small snoot. And, you, and then there's blinds. You could use blinds with any table. Blinds pay a Cree roll in natural light. Then there's spring clamps. They're very good, any type of size. Spring clamps are great for holding like plexiglass sheets on the table. And then the C clamps and the great all sizes. And that's great for holding a scrim on a black plexiglass table. And I'll talk about that later. And then there's duct tape. It's great for holding stuff. Duct tape, you could also create a slit snoot for a small flashlight. Then there are clothespins and that's great for attaching the colorful gel on the flash head. And some of these items you can buy at an art store. You could also buy a lot of this at a hardware store. You could also buy some of this at a grocery store like duct tape and clothespins. There are many ways to use 
the white plexiglass table. You could use it with one light, two lights, three lights. Flash continuous, I recommend flash. You could use natural light with the flash, with the LED light. You could use just with natural light. And see, things are great, very important, or the angle of the camera and position of the light. You can get a nice reflection if you angle the camera appropriately and also position the light. I'll talk about that. We talk about two lights and three lights. The next set of slides, I'm gonna demonstrate how to use one light, two lights, three lights. This is one way to use a white plexiglass table. You just have one light. This is great for a simple product setup with the white background. It's a simple light setup. You just have the light above the product. And you just may have the angle of the light so you get the product label better. And most of the times I use flash, I was just using this floodlight to set it up real quick. This is a way to use two lights with the white plexiglass table. Again, this is great for product photography. It's a simple setup. You just have two lights at a 45 degree angle. You can position these lights facing each other or on back of the subject at a 45 degree angle. And if you go back to this side, you can have a light here. You can also have a light here or a light here. You can also have three lights, light here and here. This is a great setup for contrast because you bring out the edges and also bring out the product label really well. And if you want to experiment with the light, I recommend feathering the light so you smooth and make the light more softer. And then there's a way to add a third light and I'll demonstrate that in the next slide. When I took still life photography at McGurney College, this is how I started out. We have a light over here at a 45 degree angle. We have a light underneath. We have a light on the back. And it's all sorts of things you can do. For beautiful reflection, you want to move this light as far as back as you can. And you want to angle the camera so you capture the product on reflection. And you can also make this table, this ramp go back. It's a great setup to bring out the reflections. It's also a great setup to have the subjects appear to be like a floating motion. In that case, you just have the flash underneath, right underneath the product. I mean, you could do a lot with this. It's a matter of positioning the light and the exposures to get what you want. This is another great setup for showing off the edges. That's why we have the light over here at a 45 degree angle. Are there any questions on the white plexiglass table? If you have any questions, just feel free to stop me. This is the black plexiglass table with the scrim. I always use a scrim to soften the light. And this setup's great for Julian watches. And you can add light without a flash, like with small mirrors or reflectors or white cards. And then sometimes you just need another light. I'll demonstrate that later. And there are ways you use a scrim. One way is over here at a 45 degree angle. Another way is a 90 degree angle. And I'll demonstrate both of these later. And this is just a plexiglass on plywood. There's cloth underneath so that the plexiglass doesn't scratch. And these are saw horses from Home Depot. And these are whole poles in the wood have drilled and then I have um, spring clamps holding up the plastic fusion scrim. Like the white plexus of the table, the same modifiers could be used. Remember that mirrors, anything silver is for dramatic light. Anything white is for soft light. 
and there's black cards to take out glares. Black cards are great for controlling strobes if the strobes bleed too much light. And there are plastic scrims, and this is a plastic scrim. It's at a 45 degree angle, and it's held up by C clamps on back. And there's colorful gels. You just, it's like the white plexiglass, but you're using a black. You just attach them with the clothespins, and you can use medium sized plexiglass sheets, white. I recommend white because the light will still shine through, but the white plexiglass will make the light softer. We talked about cinephil. And you can use blinds with the black plexus table and spring clamps and C clamps are great regardless of the size. We talked about where you could purchase all this stuff, various stores, and you can also purchase it online, go to the company's website. This is one way to use the black plexiglass table. The scrim is at a 45 degree angle. And this is, I'm just using, you know, the ways you use the plexiglass table with one or more lights, flash continuous. I recommend using flash. You could also use just natural ambient light with the flash, with the lid, also with no electric, electronic light. Again, two things are really important are position the light, make sure the light hits the subject. I'll demonstrate that next. This is angle and position the camera. It's also important. So you capture what you want. And this is what the backlight looks like with the black plexiglass table. It's 45 degrees. The light will shine through and you gotta have the subject within the light. The tricky part is making the light aiming at the subject. And then you gotta angle your body, your camera, so that you hit the subject with the light when you take the picture. And this is great for anything small like a watch. And you wanna make sure the watch is faced up. This is a way to use two lights. Again, the scrim's at a 45 degree angle. This is at a 45 degree angle. If kids just throw a mug, it would bring out the product label better. If it just had one light, then if I take the shot, the front part of the mug would be dark. Again, I use flash a lot. You could use continuous too. This is a way to use a black plexiglass table with the scrim with the 90 degrees. You can do a lot of cool stuff like vignetting, non vignetting I'll talk about that in the next few slides. And it's great for clear glass subjects. You only need the light position in the back of the fu plastic fusion because the light will shine right through. And for non glass subjects, then you gotta have a light at a 40 degree angle. So it's a contrast, the light will bring contrast to the photograph. Or you can put a light on, on top, like a Paramount style, or on this corner. And you can add light with mirrors and white cards. Yeah, in this plexiglass table, the screen is 90 degrees. The light will shine right through the glass now to make this less harsh, you can just move the light further away. If you notice the heavy medanning is the light circles cut in half as I position the light for this effect. And then for non gloss subjects, we need a, a light at a 45 degree angle. So you bring out, suppose this were like a mug, you bring out the front part of the mug out better. And here I raise the light up to change the look of the photograph. And then you could try moving the light away from the scrim. You can also aim the light up. And this is just with one light shining through a glass subject. And this is two lights 
you have the back flash and you have a flash over here. And the reason why I have this slide here is because this is a non-glass subject that if I were to take it just with this light, the front part would be dark. That's why I have a light here at a 40 degree angle. So you light the subject better. In this scrim, these are stretcher frames. This is plastic fusion scrim from BH. Staples I got from Plaza Arts. This is a regular steel F table. This is a great setup for natural light and also light painting too. I'll talk about that later. For natural light, blinds play an important role. You want to angle the lights at a 40 degree angle. If the light's still too harsh, you put the scrim in front of the light. So two important steps is use, the avail use available ambient light and use the blinds. You want to aim the light and if you, you could add light with white cards, but if the light's very harsh, you could put a scrim in front of the, the window. Again, like the light regular table, you've seen these modifiers before, that anything silver is for dramatic light, anything soft is white lights for anything soft. Black cards are great for taking out glares, even with natural light. That's a scrim and the gels. Blinds are an important part because you aim the light at the subject. And these are spring clamps. You could also do this with C clamps holding the, and just this white brown foam board bought from BH on top of plywood. You can buy a lot of this at an art store. You can buy it online. Again, we could use one or more lights with natural light. I recommend you using like a lead light because flash can be very powerful. Sometimes all you need is just a natural light and you don't need a flash. And angle the camera, position the light. In this case, position the scrim to soften the light. And we could use many modifiers. And the thing I want to warn you, when you add light, I recommend a big reflector. Because if you have a small mirror, you, you put a nasty glare on the subject. I recommend using a big silver reflector or a big white reflector. This is a way to use a regular still F table for light painting. And this is a great setup for light painting, especially anything small. And recommends maybe light painting through a white reflector or white scrim. I also recommend, I'll talk about this later, is that when you use a lead flashlight that you use a filter. You wanna make sure you have a really dark background to light paint. And you wanna hold the lead flashlight Here's a subject at a 45 degree angle. You want to go back and forth. You want to paint the subject with light going back and forth. You want to go slower for emphasizing more light, then you want to quicker for em emphasizing less light. I recommend using a lead flashlight between 80 and 120 lumens that's measuring the lead power. Larger lumens flashlights, I recommend filters. The control light or just painting through a scrim. I recommend filters with all size flashlights. And filters really help soften the light. They work well with any flashlight. You just have to measure the flashlight and fit it on the flashlight. I'll talk about that later. And you definitely want to use filters to soften the light. And I talk about how to create a filter with a foil pipe and duct tape. And duct tape, as I said before, you can create a, like a slit snoot for a small flashlight. These are what my lead flashlight looks like. 
Smallest is 50, then 80, then 120. This is probably many more luminums than these. And these are the most powerful flashlights. I recommend using these painting through like a white scrim. And these lights were either purchased at Home Depot or Micro Center. And I recommend using a foil filter or just filters. I call them foil because they're made out of foil pipes. And I measure the flashlight, go to the hardware store, measure the pipe and I fit in the flashlight. You can buy these flashlights also online in addition to going to the store. This is what the foil filters look like. These are just foil pipes bought from Home Depot and they're connected with duct tape. Again, they really help control the light and you wanna swing back and forth. And light painting outside, I recommend just maybe just paint through like a reflector or a white scrim. And I'll stress that the more you control the lighting with these filters, masking, and Photoshop will be a lot easier. All you do is put the filters on the flashlight. You wanna swing in like a clockwise or a pendulum motion. You wanna go slowly to emphasize more light, quicker, you wanna use less light. You wanna think of the direction of the light, you wanna have a plan. You want to use light from one direction to add more impact. These are what my flight sides look when they have the filters turned on. Big difference when you use a filter and when you don't use a filter. Lights will look differently. You light paint differently, but you have more control of light and you light paint better. You make Photoshop's masking job easier with these filters. The more you control the light, the more you control your light painting. And these are what the LED lights turned on with no filters attached. Big difference when you use a filter and you don't use a filter. These lights of course look different and you light paint differently. When we're talking about Photoshop masking, it's easier if you control the light. And it's a lot better to use your filters than not to use these filters. This is what the camera diagram for light painting looks like. We're on ball mode, we're in aperture 16, ISO 100. This is the picture mode, this is the white balance, this is the meter mode, this is the focus mode, 19 point focus. For outdoor light painting, I would recommend trying 8.0. You wanna shoot in raw, you wanna shoot with the full battery. You wanna make sure all your LED flashlights or LED lights are working. Make sure you have a fresh set of batteries have an extra set of fresh batteries and you don't want to use the button on the camera. You want to use like a cable release or a remote to hold the camera still when you do light painting. This is the diagram for the white balance. I always say daylight white balance is the most natural. I never use auto because you're adding too much artificial ingredients to the photograph. Some people call it auto white balance all wrong bounds. In the shade, there's cloudy, there's tungsten, light fluorescent. And the temperature is measured in Kelvins and you could set the Kelvin on modern DSLRs today. And a custom white balance is when you use a white card and then you adjust, you just adjust it with the camera. I just like to keep it on daylight because if the light changes in the custom, you have to do a new custom. This is what 
the noise reduction looks like diagram. One is automatic, two is a little different. Something happens even if you take the picture. It's going through algorithms and two is great for correcting blue color cast. When you use two, it'll take a little, a little longer to go back to the original screen. In modern DSRs today, they don't have this problem, but early, early DSRs did. But if you need to use a setting, it's there if you need it. And I recommend using one, but if you use two, just don't use this one taking fireworks pictures because when you want to take another shot, the screen is trying to go back to the original screen. You can miss a shot. This is the ISO noise reduction diagram. I always use two for strong. One's also good to use. And it's a lot better to use a setting than not to use it. Use one or two, but I would not disable the setting. This is what the camera looks like when I do regular still life, like a white plexi table, black plexi table. If I shot at 125th, sometimes if it's too overexposed, I have that cut the shutter in half, it raises the aperture. I always use ISO 100. I like to use a standard picture mode. I like to use a daylight white balance. I like to use evaluative metering mode. I like to use the 19 point focus mode. Is that a full battery? I like to use AA focus. And this is the regular standard picture. There's also like the timer, like two second. There's also high density shot, low density shot. There's also the 10 second exposure in this box right here. You should use manual bulb mode. You use ISR 100 to 200 with the tripod. Without a tripod, you use ISR 400 or even greater than 800. This is another camera setting diagram. Some of these we talked about, white balance, we talked about picture style. And this color space, I recommend using sRGB because it's easier for color correcting or managing colors within Adobe Photoshop. It's easier than RGB. The exposure bracketing is where you take a shot, three shots, you can have one or two stops over, one or two stops under, then a regular shot. This is what I clean my plexiglass table with. It's Novus. A lot of times I just use one for a plastic clean and shine, two is for small scratches, three is for heavy scratches. If you use two, then you use one. If you use three, then you get use two, then one. You can buy this online on Amazon, or you can buy it at any auto cost store. These are what my lighting modifiers look like. You have mirrors with a folding arm, you can buy these at CVS. You have armature clips, we could hold mirror plates up. This is duct tape. Buy this in the grocery store, Safeway. This is armature wire. This is for holding stuff up. If you're in floating motion, early film days, early photographers did this. I still do this from time to time. Use armature wire. Got the C-clamps. This is great for holding up a plastic fusion scrim, either at a 45 degree angle or a 90 degree angle. This is great for holding things. These are silver cards. These are gold cards. Silver cards for anything dramatic light. These are also dramatic because you have like a yellowish tint when you use the gold cards. I 
This is Cinefill. This is great for attaching on a snoot. They create like a cheap snoot. You use duct tape or small spring clamps to hold it together. These are colorful gels, come in all sizes. Bought these, the ones in the string at Plaza Arts. Use these for my big strobes. This is plastic fusion drum fat paper. You buy this at Plaza Arts, this is great for putting in front of the strobe to flash, to, to soften the light. These are called spring clamps. These are great for holding things. You can use these many ways. You could hold a scrim at a 90 degree angle or at a 45 degree angle. These are closed pins, great for attaching the gels and the flash. These are what my plastic fusion scrims looks like. I built all these frames with stretch and supplies arts. This is a frame already made and I bought this at Target. And this paper, this draft fusion paper is a different, is thicker than this. This is what my white cards look like. You can do all sorts of things. This is great. This one down here with the folding is great for bouncing light and food. These are my black cards and the folding and they're great for if too much light is on a subject, they're great for taking out glares. They're great for um, controlling bleeding strobes that have too much light. So white plexiglass sheets, this is great for softening the light. You use spring clamps to hold it on the table. These are clear plexiglass sheets. There's ways to do food with the white backgrounds a little foot away. And it's great to have the food in like a floating motion. And this is black cards we talked about that are black plexiglass sheets. This is great. If you don't feel like using a big four foot plexiglass sheet. I'm going to go to my Photoshop demo. This is a Debbie Camera Raw. What I do is I take many single exposures of one part of an image. I then make the, I, I pick out the best ones. I put them in here. Then I sync all the properties in Lightroom. I put the JPEGs here and then Here's the master art file, but here are all the JPEGs. And I'm gonna go into Photoshop and talk about what to do next. Okay. I go to my Photoshop master art file. And basically what I do, all these exposures you see disappearing, basically what I do is better 
selection. There, make a selection. I paste it in. When I try to fit it on, try to make it perfectly fit. What I do is I then turn it in. I turn it into a layer mask. And what I like to do is experiment with the blend modes. First, just want to um, paint in gray. There's a brush. And I want to be, I like to try with Okay, that's one way. I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna try with a different blend mode. I'm experiment with like, let's try overlay. Sometimes you just gotta experiment with the with the blend modes. Didn't do anything. So then I try with try to lighten. One away, then now I'm going to try and I pick the best one. So I just experiment with blend modes. So I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna throw all these away. Already got it done. So we just make into the shucks I first paint with gray and white, gray, then white, gray, then white, gray, then white. I recommend doing like this and multiple selections, easy to manage. Then try 
use some noise filters. I want to take out some speckles. I want to take out some dusts and scratches. Just have it at one pixel. You have more, but let's just use one. Sharpen. Just have it, you know, we want to make sure that we look for any hail as we do sharpen. And then there's actions. Uh, some actions. There's also actions for and then that, that this is the big height. But since this the width is bigger, I use this. I'm going to just, you know, that's how we do that. So I'm going to go back to the original file. I'm going to talk about other ways I do. Then I always start with raw. What I do is I and it take care of the chromat bad error color chromatations. I check out the profile box. It's a little different because this is a filter. Then I, I use, and then make all the changes, work my way down. And I sharpen 150, details about 80. Maxing, you want to hide some of the sharpening or 50% level. And again, I have actions for this. So, are there any questions? And these are some of my Facebook groups. This group's growing many people a day, probably over a thousand a year. This group's another group, Architecture City States and Facebook for Architecture Design and Cityscapes. And I'm running this another one with another person. It's any type of fine art you like you can go on this group. And here are my business links, Instagram, Google, LinkedIn, Twitter. Here's my fine art website. And here's my portfolio website. So, you have any questions? I'll be glad to take them. If you have any other questions? Just email me at mputrelliart2016 at gmail.com.